G'day guys, in this video I plan to summarize for you relative motion, and specifically relative motion with rotating reference axes. So to help understand all of this stuff, I think it's easiest to imagine that we have a metal plate like this. And let's imagine that on this metal plate we have a person, A. And let's say that this person is free to move around on top of this plate as much as he or she likes. And now let's also imagine that we have, at point B, a camera which is fixed to the plate at this point. And let's say that the purpose of this camera is to measure the position of A relative to it. So it's got, it's measuring the position of point A being a distance X in the horizontal and a distance Y in the vertical like this, okay? And now my question to you, the fundamental question is, what is the absolute acceleration of A if this plate is free to move? So in other words, what is the acceleration of A as measured from a fixed, or if you like, inertial frame of reference, x, y? Well, let's see this plate move and see what happens. All right, let's do that again, but this time a little bit slower. Now, the main thing I wanted to stress from this small little animation I made was to show you that our reference axes, x, y, are in fact rotating. And we can quantify just how much they rotate by defining an angle theta from the horizontal like this. And if we define theta in this way, then we have expressions for the angular velocity, omega, and angular acceleration, alpha of our plate. Omega will be d theta dt, and alpha will be d omega dt. Now it turns out from just this alone, we can find expressions for the absolute velocity and absolute acceleration of point A. So let's talk about velocities first. We know that the velocity of point A, the absolute velocity of point A, is going to be equal to the absolute velocity of point B plus the velocity of P relative to B, I haven't talked about point P yet, but I will shortly, plus another term called V rel. Rel is short for relative, and I'm going to be describing what this term means shortly too. So first let's box this off, and then I'll talk about each of these terms individually. So VA is your absolute velocity of A. And it's the velocity of point A relative to these fixed axes just here. Now VB is your absolute velocity of point B. And to help you understand what that means graphically, let me actually draw what the velocity of B could be at this particular instant, VB. It could look like this, depending on how the plate is moving at this particular instant. All right, now let's talk about this term just here. And to begin talking about it, we need to define what we mean by point P. Point P is defined as a point at the exact same position as point A at this instant, except with one crucial difference. Point P is defined to be attached to the plate, whereas point A is not. So to summarize, point P is coincident with A, but point P is attached to the plate, whereas point A is moving on top of the plate, potentially. And so that means this whole term right here means the velocity of P relative to fixed axes at B. Now it turns out that this particular velocity can also be evaluated using cross products. It can also be evaluated using the expression omega cross RAB, where omega is your angular velocity vector and RAB is your position of A relative to B. And so let me draw that position vector in orange right here. This is gonna be your position vector RAB like this. Now let's try and visualize what this velocity vector looks like on this diagram. Well, we can actually use the right hand rule from this cross product to figure out the direction. But a way I personally like to think about it is, since point P is attached to the plate, and since point B is also attached to the plate, then the velocity of P relative to fixed axes at B will look like circular motion. So that means then that the velocity of P relative to B is actually going to be normal to the position vector just here. This is going to be the velocity of P 
relative to B like this. And notice that it's normal from circular motion intuition. All right, now let's lastly talk about V rel. V rel is the velocity of A relative to B as if omega was zero. So let's try and visualize what this term means just here. Since we're treating it as if omega is equal to zero, we're considering it as if this plate isn't rotating at all. And since it's relative to B, we're also considering that point B is essentially stationary. So what we're really viewing is we're viewing the path of A on top of the plate exclusively. So let's say that point A made a journey from point here along the plate to here at this particular instant. That would mean that the velocity V rel will be tangent to the path and in fact will be pointing this way. This will be V rel. All right, now that we've got velocity sorted, let's start talking about acceleration. Notice that I've redrawn this diagram here so I can plot the acceleration vectors that make up A, just like I've done for the velocity vectors. Okay, well, what's the absolute acceleration of point A? It turns out if you do the math that the acceleration of A is going to be equal to the absolute acceleration of B plus the acceleration of P relative to B plus something called the Coriolis acceleration, which is two times omega cross V rel plus A rel. Now there's a lot of terms here, so let me break this up for you. First things first, AA is the absolute acceleration of A. And so what that means is, it's the acceleration of A relative to these fixed axes. Now let's talk about AB. Unsurprisingly, this is your absolute acceleration of point B. And this is really dependent on how the plate is moving at this instant. But let's just say that the acceleration of point B at this particular instant looks like this. This is the acceleration of B right here. Now let's talk about the term APB. This is the acceleration of P relative to fixed axes at B. So once again, point P is a point coincident with A. It's right here, and it's attached to the rotating plate. Now, as it turns out, this term can also be evaluated using cross products. And if you go through the maths, you can prove that this term is equal to alpha cross RAB plus omega cross omega cross RAB. Now this formula right here should look really familiar to you. Notice it looks uncannily similar to circular motion formulas, which actually makes sense. Because point P is fixed to the plate, and because point B is also fixed to the plate, then P will undergo circular motion relative to B. So if I were to actually draw the accelerations here, you'll notice you'll have a tangential and a normal acceleration from circular motion. Let me draw the tangential one first. This is going to be your tangential acceleration, a p relative to b in the tangential direction. And we know that's just alpha r. And it's gonna have a normal acceleration, which is going to be a p relative to b in the normal direction just here. And of course we know that's going to be omega squared r. That's where these cross products come from. All right, now let's talk about the famous Coriolis acceleration, 2 omega cross V rel. Now the intuition behind this formula is a little bit tricky and is honestly deserving of a whole video on its own. But just by application of the right hand rule, you can tell that the acceleration vector must be orthogonal to both omega and V rel. And since V rel is pointing in this direction, that means that the Coriolis acceleration must be pointing 90 degrees from that, which will be just here. So this is our Coriolis acceleration, and I'll just write that as 2 omega cross V rel, like this. And lastly, let's talk about this acceleration vector just here. This is the acceleration of A relative to B as if omega equals zero. And so the way you draw this vector is to imagine that this plate isn't moving at all. 
And in fact, because we're dealing with the acceleration of A relative to B, we've really just isolated the path of A by itself. So let's see what happens if point A is swooping out a path like this, say, on top of the plate. Well, if that's the case, then at this particular instant, it will have a tangential component of your A rel term, which looks like it will be in this direction. This will be A rel T. And notice it's got to be parallel with your V rel term here, because V rel also has to be tangential to the path as well. But not only that, it means that your A rel term will also have a normal component of acceleration, which, according to the look of this curve, seems to be in this particular direction just here. This will be A rel n, your normal component of your A rel term. And once again, these terms are just decided purely based off the path A makes on top of the plate. Now it looks like we're done. We found expressions for the absolute velocity of A and absolute acceleration of A, and have drawn in each of these vectors on these two graphs just here. Now I know it can look quite scary to see all of these vectors on these diagrams like this, but rest assured when you do a few example problems, you realize that it's not as hard as it looks, and in fact a lot of these vector terms come quite intuitively to you. And I'll do a few of those example problems for you now. Cheers.